Hi you guys. Well, there's some stuff going on here with Canadian politics. Canada barreling towards spring election campaign. To be honest, I don't really quite understand the Canadian election system. It seems to me like we just elect a new government whenever we get sick of the old one, or whenever the powers that be decide that it's time for a change. Well, just days after the announcement that we're going to have an election, the papers were reporting this. Harper government falls in historic commons showdown. It's like when things get rough, they just dissolve Parliament. Make it sound like a laundry stain or something. Okay, here's what happened. On Friday, March 25th, the 156 opposition MPs in the Canadian Parliament rose to support a motion of no confidence and declared the government to be in contempt of Parliament for its refusal to share information that opposition members said they needed to properly assess legislation put before them. So they lost confidence in the government, which led by Harper, and um, they, they also said that he was in contempt of Parliament, and apparently this is a first for Canada. So in this video, which is embedded in a post on my blog, you can see Harper's reaction, his interpretation of the uh, parliamentary vote, he says that, quote, Canadians don't care about the maneuvers of Parliament and the wording of various motions. He basically, he thinks Canadians just don't care. Like, he's counting on your apathy. And he may not be that wrong because, as it turns out, they had to uh, move an election debate because it fell on the same night as hockey. And you know, as Canadians, everybody would be watching hockey. So what does that tell you about how much Canadians care about politics? But here's the thing, the motion on the 25th was largely initiated by the Liberal Party headed by Michael Ignatieff. And if you look into who Michael Ignatieff is and how he came to be leader of the Liberal Party and possibly the next Prime Minister, you'll find some strange things. If you go to a basic site like Wikipedia, you'll see that he was the elder son of Russian-born Canadian diplomat George Ignatieff. So he's the son of a diplomat. I've heard actually that he's also descendant of uh, Russian royalty, which would put him in some kind of elite bloodline. And uh, he, he lived in Canada until he moved to the United Kingdom in 1978. And he was there until in 2000 he accepted a position as the director of Carr Center for Human Rights Policy at the John F. Kennedy uh, School of Government at Harvard University and then he was in the States until he came back to Canada in 2005. So he'd been out of Canada for like over 25 years. But as soon as he came back to Canada he jumped right into being a political leader up here. In this article you'll learn the strange history of how he actually became the Liberal MP for the Etobicoke Lakeshore uh, riding in 2005. It was, it was a liberal riding, and when the other two candidates went to um, the Liberal Party headquarters, uh, they found that the door was locked, so they couldn't submit their application. So he was the only running liberal candidate, and surprise, surprise, he ended up being the MP of the region because they always voted liberal. So he kind of did become uh, MP of uh, Etobicoke Lakeshore by default. So the guy comes back to Canada after having been out of the country for like 25 years and pretty much immediately becomes the MP of, of a riding in Ontario because the other two Liberal candidates were locked out of the party headquarters. It, it looks to me like somebody was pulling some kind of strings. Alright, so he was lucky once, but then he got lucky again. It's in 2009, the Liberal leader Stéphane Dion resigned. Everybody said he was a lame duck. That was the buzzword. I don't know if Stéphane Dion really was a lame duck or that was just some kind of propaganda, but here's what happened with uh, Ignatieff. He was one of three candidates that were trying to take over the leadership of the Liberal Party, and the other two, uh, Dominic LeBlanc and Bob Ray, announced that they were dropping out of the race on December 8th and 9th, respectively. They just decided to drop out of the race within like a day of each other. I wonder how that happened. Michael Ignatieff has some kind of luck. So once again, he was the only running candidate and he became the leader of the Liberal Party. How does a guy get so lucky? Candidates locked out of the party headquarters, candidates dropping out at the last minute. I mean, how does this happen? Could it have something to do with his connections? 
This can be found on freemasonrewatch.org, but it was originally from the Globe and Mail. Okay, this is written by someone called Brooke Clark. I'm just going to read it to you. It says, I was shocked to read that William Christian's letter suggesting... Don't want to wake up my son. I was shocked to read William Christian's letter suggesting a link between Michael Ignatieff and the Illuminati. As the article was called The Ignatieff Code, May 10th. A cursory reading of Canadian history will make it clear that control of our nation has passed back and forth between two lesser-known Masonic groups, the Ignorati and the Obscuri. The Illuminati, alas, have shown no interest in taking over. And even if they wanted to rule Canada, they wouldn't do so by a method so cumbersome as to require their man to win two elections. First the Liberal Party leadership, and then the general election to become Prime Minister. The Illuminati do not trust the fate of nations to the dubious wisdom of the general populace. As a conspiracy-minded acquaintance once remarked shortly before he disappeared, if voting made a difference, they wouldn't let you vote. So, so they don't think that, they think it would be too cumbersome to require their man to win two elections to become Prime Minister. Oh yeah? Well, it looks like they made it work for Michael Ignatieff and now for the federal election they've got everybody hating Harper so much and our government is always either liberal or conservative they've already got Ignatieff in there as the leader of the Liberal Party now they've seen to it that you know everybody's so pissed off with Harper they're gonna shift it over to the Liberals in the next election it's pas compliqué ta manac some uh, Canadian truthers recently confronted Michael Ignatieff uh, they asked him if he'd ever been to a Bilderberg meeting. I mean, that was one of the things. And uh, it's funny because he, he started out saying, uh, no, and I've never been in a black helicopter either. Like, he was going to make fun of it, like a conspiracy theory. And then he realized, well, wait a minute, no, the public is aware that this is real. So I better not say that, or it's going to make me look like an ass. So he said, uh, oh, well, no, and, you know, there should be complete transparency, and we shouldn't have, you know, groups like Bilderberg uh, making decisions for countries. So... But he, he could, you could see the, the, you know, the shift from, I'm going to you know, mock this to, wait a minute, no, I better not. So I guess we're making some progress. Facts about Michael Ignatieff. He has openly stated that he supports an American empire and a global hegemony. He is also the great, great, great grandson of William Lawson, the first president of the Bank of Nova Scotia. Ignatieff has argued that Western democracies may have to resort to lesser evils, like indefinite detention of suspects, coercive interrogations, assassinations, and preemptive wars in order to combat the greater evil of terrorism. Now, where have I heard that kind of stuff before? When asked about Canada's future, he stated that he honestly does not see a future for Canada. Well, at least he's honest. He argued that the Afghanistan mission tests the success of Canada's shift from the peacekeeping paradigm to the peace enforcement paradigm. What's peace enforcement? It's war. And they ask in this video, does this sound like the kind of change Canadians really want, or does this sound like more rhetoric from another New World Order puppet? I have to go with New World Order puppet. So like they said in the Globe and Mail article on freemasonrywatch.org, if voting made a difference, they wouldn't let you vote. That's exactly right. And I really don't think that voting will make any difference. Because they've got it all planned out. It's so obvious they're putting this guy in place. I mean, I could be wrong. It could be, I don't know, who? Who else is going to be the leader? It's not going to be conservatives. It's going to be liberal. It has to be. It's like with going from the Bush government to the Obama government. It's that left-right paradigm thing. And, and that's the same thing we've got going on here. And they, they made the Americans think they're going to have all this great change with Obama. It's just continuing the globalist agenda. And, and now we're, we're having to deal with the same thing up here. And it's so obvious what they're doing. This is an Illuminati guy, and he's been put in this position by a lot of, you know, careful and and deceitful maneuvers, as far as I can tell. Well, thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.